Hey everyone, my name is Anthony Wright. This is my wife Chandra, and we are the pastors of Just Christ Ministries. We are so excited you have decided to join us for this worship experience. We're a church designed with the community in mind, working on the whole person, spirit, soul, and body. Thank you again for joining us. Let's go into service. Let the 
power in the name of Jesus. Power in your name. Power in the name of Jesus. So much power in His name. Come on, there is power. Power in the name of Jesus. So much power in so your much name. power in your name. Come on, there is power. There is power in the name of Jesus. So much power in your name. Power in your name. Things change when I call. Things change when I call you, Jesus. Things change when I call you.
Jesus, Jesus. There's the healing in the name of Jesus. Jesus. The enemy trembles in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Satan, you have to flee. Jesus, Jesus. I feel the stronger in the name of Jesus. Jesus. I feel so wise in the name of Jesus. I get my power in the name of Jesus. I get a victory in the name of Jesus. Let nobody like Jesus. 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 Nobody can hold me like Jesus. Jesus. Nobody can love me like Jesus. Jesus. His name is Jesus. 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 Praise you, God. 
you in this house today, God. God, we honor you, God. God, we adore you, God. God, we appreciate you and who you are, God. God, you're welcome, God. God, you're welcome, God. God, you're welcome in this place this morning, oh God. God, move by your spirit, God. God, move by your power, God. God, move by your power, God. God, let us do what you want us to do today in service today, God. Hallelujah, God. Somebody came with an expectation today. Hallelujah, God. And God, I thank you, God, that you're the God who comes for God. And you meet the need today, oh God. God, I put a demand on you today, God. God, I ask God that you meet each and every need in this house today, oh God. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. Somebody's been praying for their marriage today, oh God. God, I thank you right now, Lord God, for stepping in, Lord God, repairing and mending relationships today, oh God. Hallelujah, God. God, I thank you, God. You're the God of comfort, God. Hallelujah, God. God, you're the God of peace, oh God. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. God, I thank you, God, that we don't have to be who we were, God, but we can be what you created us to be, oh God. Hallelujah, God. God, I thank you, God. I thank you, God, for delivering today, oh God. Set us free, oh God. Set us free, oh God. God, break every chain right now in the name of Jesus, God. God, Lord, it up with your will, oh God. God, Lord, it up with your will, oh God. God, help us, God. God, help us, God. God, we need you, God. God, we need you, God. God, we tried it on our own, God. God, and it didn't work, God. God, we failed, God. God, we failed, God. And God, we repent today, God. We repent, God. We repent, God, for trying to do it our way, God. But today, God, we're going to do it differently, God. God, we're going to do it exactly the way how you told us to do it, God. God, we're going to sacrifice, God. God, we're going to be obedient, God. God, we're going to do it the way that you showed us. The way you told us, God. God, I thank you, God, right now, God, for opening doors, God. God, I thank you, God, for closing homes that need to be closed, oh God. God, I thank you, God. I thank you for victory today, God. Thank you, Lord. Victory God. over our finances today, God. Victory you, over our health today, oh God. Victory on our jobs today, oh God. God, victory in every area today, oh God. God, I thank you, God. Anything that the enemy thought he was gonna do today, God, I cancel it right now with the name of Jesus, God. In the name of Jesus, oh God. In the name of Jesus, oh God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. We bless your name. Thank you, Jesus. We glorify you. Hallelujah. Can we give God a hand clap of praise? Hallelujah. Come on, let's give God a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There is power in the name of Jesus. The Bible said this. The Bible said the name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous run to it and guess what? They're safe. You might have to call on the name of Jesus. You know, you know, real quick, you know, this week has been a lot going on, running here and running there and you know, I kind of found myself depleted. And, you know, sometimes we have our own little pity parties. Amen. And guess what? Nothing changed. I got mad, got angry, but nothing changed. Nothing changed until I begin to call on the name of Jesus. Come on now. When you call on his name, things change. Come on now. Healing, deliverance, forgiveness, strength. Hallelujah. His name is a strong tower. And we're safe when we run to it. Amen. This time I want to welcome. We're going to be seated. I want to welcome all of you who are in the building on today, as well as those who are online it is such a blessing to be in the house of the Lord one more time. As always, it is my prayer that something will be said or done during our time together that would encourage you in your faith walk. And if you don't know Jesus, it is my prayer that you will come to know him on today. How many of you got to be here on today? Tell somebody, say, neighbor, I don't know about you, but I'm glad to be in the house of the Lord one more time. 
The Bible said, this is the day the Lord has made. We ought to rejoice and be glad in it. I have a couple of announcements. I want to just start by thanking all of you all who supported our community fundraiser. Let's give ourselves a hand. Amen. Those who are watching that donated. I mean, we are so grateful for your support. I mean, Just Christ Ministries, you guys came and you showed out. I really appreciate you guys. Many of you all stayed from the beginning to the end. I mean, it got chilly out there, but you guys were troopers, and I really, really appreciate that. I would not want to pastor any other church but Just Christ Ministries. I'll say this in all sincerity. They could not pay me enough money to leave here. Come on, that says a lot about you. It says a lot about the kind of people you are, the kind of support you guys give to vision, and I am greatly appreciated. Appreciate it, amen? So, so we thank and praise God for our security team for, without in full force. I mean, they were out there, they had their walkie-talkies, their uniforms. It was just an amazing day, amen, in the Lord. Um, next week, there's gonna be a special on Channel 2 News they came out last week, get a whole story about what we're doing. They did a video of the mental health facility. And so we're thanking and praising God for allowing this vision to get national spotlight. Now, I'm gonna tell you how good God is. I had no idea about this, um, this special coverage coming up. And Mother Moore from home, she emailed me and said, Pastor Wright, here is some information to start a GoFundMe. I mean, she typed up everything verbatim. I just had to cut and paste because now we're gonna use GoFundMe, amen, to help promote this national coverage we're gonna get to get people to give from all over the world. Amen, come on now, give God a praise. You know, and it's funny because she didn't have to do that. So we thank you, Mother Moore, we love you. We know you're not in the middle, but we know that you are still connected. You are still pushing for the vision. Now, I'm going to tell you all this. After we get done with this mental health facility, God is saying we are going into business. We are going into investment. We're going into technology. Amen. How do we now begin to bring business, investment, and technology to our community? The other day when I was talking to a young man came out there, uh, shout out to D'Angelo. He was talking about how he has his own business. And he was saying that, in order for his business to grow, he needs a truck. And so I'm thinking, I say, man, if you had a good business plan or a good business model, I know enough people in the church to put five, 10, 15, to get you a truck. What are we doing? We're investing in business. We need to stop trying to beg businesses to come to our community and let's start building our own businesses. Come on, can, can you all catch the vision? So we, we're going for mental health, we're going to business, investment, and technology. We are going to change our community from the inside out. Can we give God a praise for what he's doing? We have entrepreneurs in this church I can envision doing seminars. Come on, teaching how to get your credit straight, how to invest. The Bible said my people suffer or perish for a lack of knowledge. We have good people in our community, but we need knowledge. We need information. And if we have to pay the best and the bright to come to our community, we'll pay. Listen, let's stop looking for handouts. Come on now. If people have information that can change your life, invest in it. We have to learn how to invest in our own future. So if you know of someone who is on the top of their game in investment, hey, let's hire them get their information, bring it to our community. Come on now, can you all see the vision? We are, we are going beyond this Sunday morning service and we are transforming our community. And once again, it's not me, it is us doing this together. You, you play a vital role in the vision God has given us for the community, so I'm really, really excited about that. With that said, let's prepare our hearts to give. Amen, any grateful givers in the house? I really have to find somebody to do the announcements. I just, I get so excited, amen, when I'm doing this. And I just really want to stay focused and I want to share my, my zeal, my enthusiasm for what God is doing. Now, now, go, now listen, I told you all last week, I didn't feel like this. See, that, what they call it, ebb and flow. It's called ebb and flows of life. You're up and you're down, you're up and you're down. But I've learned that when I find myself down, when I call on Jesus, Come on now. 
When you find yourself in the valley, don't lay there and mope and woe is me and I can't get no help and nobody. No, Come, Jesus, send out an SOS in the spirit. And the Bible says that his ears are attentive to our cry and God will send help. Can I be transparent for a moment, y'all? Just for a moment. The lady from Channel 2, I'm not going to say her name. She has been hunting me down. I mean, she's been hunting me down to do this. She said because she has a passion for what we're doing. And I was getting kind of discouraged and just tired and weary. And she was really the wind beneath my wings. And guess what? She ain't a Christian. Guess what? She's not African American. But guess what? She was a God sent. Can anybody attest to the fact that when you call on Jesus, he'll send you help? In your marriage with your kids. Come on now. All you do is humble yourself and say, Jesus, I need your help. See, the Bible says when we are weak, that's when we're strong. See, the Bible said those that are well don't need no physician. We say, God, you know what? I'm weak. I need you. I need direction. I need finances. I need a job. I need a mate. The Bible says he is a very present help in your time of trouble. Can we just call Jesus? Jesus. Come on, whatever you need, come on. Jesus. Jesus, we look to you, God, for you are the author and the finisher of our faith. Can we just lift our hands and God bless you for a moment? Come on now. Come on, God's spirit is already here. Come on, he's already in heaven, our worship and our praise. Whatever you are in need of on today, just begin to call on his name. Jesus, 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 hallelujah, bless your name, God. Now, now I, I want to share the practical part now, because see, when you call on Jesus, now he has your undivided attention, amen, now he wants to give you revelation, because see, just calling on Jesus is not going to change your situation, can we make this practical? Calling on Jesus, everybody now has he does the, the uh, undivided attention. Now God gives revelation. He gives insight. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. So listen, let me move on. So we thank and praise God for the blessing of giving. Amen. If you want to give, be a blessing to our church, you can give through Cash App at dollar sign JCM Chicago. Once again, that's dollar sign JCM Chicago, or you can text to give. You can text the number 773-455-0008. Text your word give. Once again, that's 773-455-0008. Text your word give. You can also give through our Tithely app. We have tried to make this so simple for everybody to be able to give. Even those who are at home. I know you're at home for whatever reason, but you are still connected to the vision Amen. And we need your continual support. Amen. Now, those who are in the building at the top envelope, please raise your hand. The ushers will assist you. Amen. And we're going to go further into worship, and then we have a powerful word from the Lord. Amen. I will sing praises unto my king, yeah. I will sing praises unto my king, yeah. He is creator of everything. He is creator of everything. I will exalt him, his name adore, yeah. I will exalt him, his name adore, yeah. Honor and reverence forevermore. Honor and reverence forevermore as we lift up our hands to our God, to our God, to me. We ascribe, we ascribe glory and honor and wisdom and strength to our God, to our God. Oh, 
of all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. Is it anybody's testimony that God's been good to you? Come on now. I'm not saying that everything in your life was perfect. I don't think there's any such thing as a perfect life. But when you look over your life, in spite of everything you've been through, can you say that God's been good to me? Come on now, we, we've lost some jobs. We've lost some relationships. We've been through abuse, neglect. Come on now. In the time where people are turning their backs on God because of what they've been through. Can we say no matter what, God's been good to me. Come on now. Listen, before I take anything back, I'll add more to it. God's been good to me. That's my testimony. That's your testimony. God's been good to me. Come on now. Remember that song, I Won't Complain? I've had some good days. And I've had some hills to climb. I've had some weary days and lonely nights. But when I look around and when I think things over, all of my good days, they outweigh my bad days. So I won't complain. Sometimes my clouds hang low. I can hardly see the road. I asked a question, Lord. Why so much pain? But He knows what's best. More than my weary eyes, they can't see. So I'll just say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I won't complain. God been good to me. He's been so, so, so good to me. More than this world could ever be he's been good he's been good he drives my tears away turns my midnights into day so i'll just say thank you lord thank you lord thank you lord I won't complain. Come on, give God a praise. Give God a praise. Amen. You may be seated in God's presence. I've learned that complaining don't change nothing. <laughs> but we call on his name. Call on his name. Amen. We are continuing our series for the month of October, Closing Ranks. Amen. We've learned that the order to close ranks is a military term that means to move rows of soldiers closer together, creating a seemingly impenetrable mass of men. When the members of a group or organization close ranks, they are regrouping their forces, especially when it involves overlooking differences in order to face a challenge or adverse situation. It is important for us, people of God on today, to close ranks, to regroup our forces so we can face our current challenges. Can we just shout out some of the challenges that we see in our world today? Somebody help me. Tell me, some, some, some of the challenges. Murder, hatred. Come on, help me. Racism, drug addiction. 
Domestic violence, mental health. Yeah, yeah. All of these things we just named, they are issues that are facing not only our community, but they're facing us in our personal lives. All these things we're mentioning, all of us are being impacted directly or indirectly. You know, I'm even now understanding that the person during the shooting are also victims too. There is some type of deficit, whether it be spiritually, mentally, or emotionally in their life that's causing them to do that. So their need or their voice or lack in their life is causing them now to do what they do. So everything that's going on is once again affecting us directly or indirectly. So now we have to regroup. We have to change our strategies in our homes, in our business, in our church. Why? Because what used to work back in the day is not working now. How many of y'all know parenting is different now than it was 20 years ago? While we have technology, we have so much going on now that makes parenting a lot different. Even business now is a lot different than the way it used to be. A lot of the brick and mortar businesses now are going online. And so if we see the challenges that we are confronted with, if we're not willing to regroup and put our differences to the side, our personal agendas to the side, and close ranks, we're not going to be able to solve these problems. There are some parents right now who are struggling raising their kids. And guess what? Because we are in ranks, there should be somebody within your circle, somebody within the church that should be able to provide you with support. Come on now, because if you were once a struggling parent and you now got together, it's only by the grace of God. And now you owe it to somebody else to what? Pay it forward. If you were once having financial problems and God bailed you out, you now owe it to somebody to pay it forward. So now we have to really rethink this, y'all, because for a season, I don't know how, we're going to talk about the church, and even in our society, we have, we have morphed into this individualistic mindset. Come on now, where it's about me, my, and I. My money, my job, my family, and some kind of a way the enemy has caused us to break ranks we have become more divided and we're experiencing greater attacks. We have isolated ourselves from our village. See, everything we needed back in the day was in our village. It was in our community. It was all there. We all didn't have a lot, but together we had enough. Let me say it again. Nobody had a lot, but together we had enough. And so what we see in this pattern of separation, COVID-19 only made it worse. So now we have to regroup. We have to find ways to reconnect so we can close ranks, not only for us to get what we need, but to help other people get what they need. God has given the order for us to close ranks because just like the children of Israel, we're going to a promised land. I do not believe, I would not accept that this is the final destination for my community. I don't accept. Look, not on my watch, not while I'm living and breathing, I'm going to fight tooth and nail because this is not the vision God's given me for my community, for my family. Come on now, for our school system. So, so we're on our way to a promised land if you can see it. See, when he sent the spies out to spy out the land he promised, they came back with a negative report. They came back basically saying, we can't do this. Things are not going to change. The people in the land are a lot stronger. They came back with a negative report. So there's somebody I'm talking to right now. God's giving you a vision of your future, of your family of your community, but you allowing what you see to, to, to blind you what you heard God say. God is saying we walk by what? And not by sight. I don't care what the people look like over there. I heard what God said. I don't care what the credit reports say. 
I heard what God said. So we have to realize that God has a promised land for our lives. And like the children of Israel, we have to close ranks. We have to be in orderly ranks. But guess what? There is a warfare. There are, there are spiritual and natural powers at work that are trying to prevent us from establishing God's kingdom on the earth. I told you all before, the spirit of the Antichrist is already here. He's working in government. He's working in the schools. Any agenda that's not according to the word of God is an Antichrist agenda. And, and there is no in between. Either the agenda on the table for our community, for our families, either it's of God or it is not. And so we have to understand as we pray thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Guess what? The Bible said the kingdom of heaven suffers violence. That means there is opposition. See, there is a kingdom that's opposing the kingdom of heaven. And so the Bible said the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, but it says we take it by force. I mean, everything that God has promised us, everything that God has said concerning our personal lives, our community, our, 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 our business, our ministry, even though we have opposition, we have to take it by force. God is saying to somebody on today, stop taking no for an answer as it pertains to the promise. Stop taking no as a response when it comes to the promise. Why? Because if God said it, somehow, some way, he's going to make it happen. Come on now. Has anybody ever heard a word from God and you were confronted with opposition and you held your ground? You stayed in faith. Didn't it not happen the way God said it would? In light of everything and everybody that came against you, if you hold on to your faith, it's going to happen just the way God said it. So, so we have to arm ourselves. The Bible says, there's a scripture that says, teach my hands how to war. In the spirit realm. Amen. And so, and, so, and so last week we talked about closing ranks in our family. Now we're talking about closing ranks in the church. Now, I went in that order because you cannot work on the church until you first work on the family. The Bible even said, if a man cannot rule his own house, he can rule a lead in the church. So, so we want to make sure that we have things in order because as we begin to close ranks in our families, that means we now have stronger church because it is families that make up the church. And so if you have dysfunctional families, guess what? You have a dysfunctional church. And so now that we have made up our minds to close ranks in our families, now we have to begin to close ranks in the church. Now, God wants us to understand or see ourselves as the church as being more than just a group of people that come out on a Sunday morning. Let's clap our hands, feel good. Who passed the preach, shout and dance. No, he wants us to see who we are in the spirit because God is doing a great move in and through the church. Amen. Let me say it again. I know we're looking for politicians and we're looking for this to happen, but God is moving through his bride. He is moving through the body, a man called the church that he has placed in the earth. We're going to see later on that we represent the body of Christ. Amen. Jesus Christ is no longer here. We are now his ambassadors. We are now his representation. Once again, we are the body of Christ. And no one person makes up the body of Christ. It is us, it is us collectively coming together that make up the body of Christ. Now, we have to learn, people of God, that as the church, as the bride of Christ, there is once again a warfare against the church. Y'all ain't gonna say amen to him. There's a warfare against the church. Anytime you say something that is biblical, that goes against the world's norm, be prepared for an attack. And we have, as the church began to water down the truth in order to appease people and their, their decisions. Amen. But God is saying in this end time, the church has to be the church if we're going to be effective. 
if we're going to be used by God. And that don't mean we're going out picking fights and nobody's our enemy. Why? Because the Bible says that they will know us not by our ability to quote scriptures. They will know us by our love. Come on, everything we do as the church has to be done in the spirit of, somebody say, love. So as the body of Christ, we have to put our differences to the side. We have to put our personal agendas to the side so we can come together, so we can close ranks to achieve our common goal. And that is the Great Commission, that we will go into the world and preach the gospel. Now, preaching the gospel is not you always having a microphone. Paul talked about being living epistles. Do you know you can live the scriptures with never having a pulpit? Can we talk on today? So our agenda is to expand God's kingdom. I told you all there are two kingdoms at work. And guess what? The Bible said God's kingdom is where? Inside of us. So we're in the earth and our common goal is to spread the gospel. And how do we expand God's kingdom on the earth. Now, the Bible said this. It says, seek ye first the what? And his righteousness and everything else will be added to us. As the church, we have become so distracted because instead of seeking the kingdom, we're seeking money. We're seeking, come on, a boo, a man, whatever you want to call them, we are so preoccupied with seeking everything except for the kingdom, and we wonder why things are not being added to our lives. When we put God's agenda first, everything we need, guess what? He will make sure that we have. But for too long, the church has not been as effective as it could or as it should be because we have been divided. We've been divided by denominationalism, whether you're Baptist, Apostolic, Church of God in Christ, AME, CME. You know, we become like a gang in a church. And we represent every Sunday. I'm Baptist. I'm the, I mean, listen, none of that stuff is in the Bible. But, but because of a difference of interpretation of Scripture, now I need to break away from you and start my own thing. And so people will go as far as saying, if you're not baptized a certain way, you're not saved. If your skirt is not long enough, you're not saved. If you wear makeup, guess what? You're not saved. And what is it doing? It's breaking ranks in the church. And instead of us being a mass of people connected, now we are individually divided. We've been divided in the church because of power struggles. Everybody wants to be in charge. Everybody wants to be in control. And, and, and nobody wants to follow. Everybody wants to lead. There's a division in the church now between the old school and the new school. The old school is saying we need to keep things the way they used to be. The new school is saying we got to do it a different way. And, and there's a division. And so what's happening now is if we don't mend this divide, the church would die of natural causes. If we do not begin to get young people more involved and having a more open mind, because once again, we talked about the idea of regrouping. That means coming up with new strategies. See, once, listen, once again, the message never changes, but the methods are subject to change. So oftentimes, after I get done preaching, I'll talk to Josh and I say, look, what do you think about the message? And they'll tell me, that, look, they don't want no punches back. I said, what should I have done? I mean, was it, was it relevant? You know, the, and, and is what I'm saying speaking to your generation. Sometimes I say, no, it didn't. And I, I want that feedback. I want that critique. Why? Because they have the pulse of their generation. And so look, how do we now merge the two together? You know, there, there are cliques in the church. You know, and, and the cliques are so bad that the people who've been in church for a long time, they push new people away. Because it's like me and you are friends. We've been friends for 20 years. A new person to come in. Instead of inviting them into your group, looking at them all kind of funny, what are we doing? We are pushing people away from the church. And so we have to look at 
these things that are causing division in the church. Because if we are brothers and sisters in Christ, we should be loving each other. We should be helping each other. We should never be talking about anybody behind their back. Amen. Why? We're going to see because we should be doing things in the godly way. Let's look at Jesus' prayer for the church. Turn to St. John 17. And let's see what Jesus' prayer was for the church. St. John 17, verses 20 through 21. There are people coming into the church who don't look like you, who don't smell like you, who don't love the way you love. Y'all miss that. But guess what? The church is for everybody. The church is a hospital. Anybody, I don't care what you're doing, how you're doing it, you are welcome into the church. I told y'all, when I came to church, I was coming in off Saturday nights being drunk all night, partying and what have you, but I knew I needed to get into the house of the Lord. And I was sitting my... Matter of fact, the ushers would tell me, you sit in the back. <laughs> you know, drinking the oh, oh, alcohol. Amen. You, baby, come on, baby. They, they was nice about it. Hey, baby, come sit back here with me. <laughs> I realized now what they were doing. The point is the church should be a place where anybody can come. And just Christ, we have to do a much better job of getting our young people more involved. I am willing to fall back. Because guess what? At some point, we have to pass this baton. And if we're not preparing the next generation, we're going to be in trouble. But that won't be our testimony. Look at St. John 17, uh, 20 to 21. You got to say amen. amen. It says, I do not pray for these alone. It is not for their sake only that I make this request, but also for all those who will ever believe and trust in me through this message. Verse 21. That they, that they all may be one, just as you, Father, are in me, and I in you. That they also may be one in us, so that the world may believe without any doubt that you sent me. It is the unity of our faith that testifies to the world that God is real. I mean, for us, people with different backgrounds, personalities, coming together for a common cause, amen, it, 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 it confounds the world. But Jesus prayed that we will what? Be one. Now, it's interesting, he did not pray for money or riches or for world peace because Jesus knew if we became one, resources wouldn't be a problem. Jesus didn't pray for world peace because he knew if we came together as one, violence would not be a problem. So he knew the answer to all the world's problems was us coming together as one. In Oklahoma City, a group of black people became one and started a black Wall Street. When you read about the Tower of Babel, we talk about the bad part about it, but we miss the part where he said, you know what? If I don't stop them because they are one, there will be nothing impossible for them. God, God, look, they were on such one accord. God, I got to stop them. They're trying to build a tower to heaven. And if, if I don't stop them, they may do it. There is power in unity. That is why the enemy comes against it so hard. Because he knows that one could put a thousand to flight, but two could put ten thousand to flight. He knows that two are better than one. God says one of the seven things I hate is a person that causes discord among the brethren. So we have to make sure that we're not allowing the enemy to use us. Anybody been used by the devil? Because you was mad? Somebody piss you off and you and your feelings and now you're going to say what you want to say, do what you want to do. You don't care what the Bible said. What we, now the enemy is using us to cause, to cause division. So I'm learning how to sit my butt down. When I'm feeling some kind of way, I, my, I get in my car, go for a drive, walk on the beach. Why? Because I don't want to do or say the wrong thing. I don't want to do that. Look at 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians 1 and 10. 1 Corinthians 1 and 10. I told you the enemy, he'll tell you what to say too, won't he? 
You get the text on that phone. And he, he telling you, come on now. But I have to ask myself, Holy Spirit, should I send this text? <laughs> Holy Spirit, should I call this person back? And oftentimes he tells me no. Why? Because he know I'm not in the right spirit. And I'm going to tell you all something. If the enemy can use us to attack each other, we're doing this job for him. Y'all missed that. If he can use me to cuss out Naya, he ain't got, he ain't got to fight her. Why? Because he's using me. So now we're fighting against each other, jealous of each other, not working with each other. He said that with legs crossed. Why? Because the seeds of discord have already been planted. See, he sowed seeds of discord, and he just wait for it to come up. So, for example, he could say, well, well, uh, Ray Ray, uh, do you know that you don't like you? Just plant the seed. And then one day, Ray Ray coming to the church and you to walk past. Not just not seeing her. I told you. I told you. The Bible says we have to cast down every imagination. Every hot thing that would exalt itself against the knowledge of God. There is a warfare in our mind, in our emotions. And if we don't control it, we'll be fighting against the wrong people. Can anybody attest there's a, there's a warfare in your emotions to have you mad, angry at people when we know the weapons of our warfare are not carnal and we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but now we're still, we're, we're beaming in on people? And all we're doing is the enemy's just laughing because he knows as long as we're divided, we can't defeat him. But if we would ever come together, if we would become one, 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 1 and 10, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10. It says, but I urge you, believers, by the name of our Lord who? Jesus Christ, that all of you be in full agreement in what you say. Now, how does that work? How, how can you get people to, to be in full agreement in what they say? For us, it's if we're saying what thus said the Lord. If we're all as believers saying, okay, I know what I feel, I know what I want, this is what the word of God says. Jesus said this, he said, if there's any way possible, let this cup pass from me. He said, but nevertheless, let your will be done. When we get to the point of nevertheless, let your will be done, we can now talk the same language. Why? Because we're all trying to achieve the will of God for our lives. It says, and that there be no division or fractions among you. None. Zero. Zilch. There should be no division among us. That does not mean we're not going to fall out. You can fall out and not be divided. <laughs> Sometimes my wife and I, we're mad at each other, and we're in the same bed. I ain't going to the couch. Come on now. So you can be mad and not be divided. And we're going to talk about how to deal with that. There should be no division in the church. My prayer right now is everybody in here, if you have any art in your heart, any problems, that you are now being convicted. And every justification you have for why you feel the way you feel, we squash that in Jesus' name. Because there should be no division, no fractions among you. It says but that ye be perfectly united in your way of thinking and in your judgment about matters of faith. That even though we may disagree, we can come together in submission to the word of God. That's how it should be. Because, for example, you could feel one way about pro-life or abortion, and I feel a certain way. But the question, what, what does the word of God say? And now we have to put our feelings to the side and come into agreement. You know what? I hate to say it, but you're right. <laughs> Why? Not me being right, but the word of God is right. The Bible said, let God be true and every man be a what? A liar. If what you would say is not according to God's word, God see you're a liar. But the word of God is true. Now, some of y'all see y'all kind of getting squirming in your seats because what? We are afraid. We are afraid of the backlash. <laughs> a pastor about with the, the cancel culture. Amen. We don't want to be canceled in our workplace. 
in our families. So we, so we, have, we have to be politically correct now so not to offend. I'm not saying we offend people, but guess what? If they ask for your opinion, tell them according to God's word. God is not saying we are to police the world. Telling people how to live, what to do, what not to do. But if you ask me, if you ask me and you want my opinion, I'm going to give you the word of God. Amen. And, and, and guess what? The word of God, the double-edged sword, it cuts coming and going. So get, just like it's cutting you, guess what? It's cutting me too. But I surrender to I'm, I'm not fighting no more. I'm not fighting no more. The Bible talks about looking at the word of God like a mirror. God, every day, show me me. Why? Because I want to change. I want to be everything that God has called me to be. Now, as a result of visiting the church, once again, the church has not been as effective as it could and as it should be. In our communities right now, you have four or five churches on one block. Can we talk about this? An abandoned building, no business, run-down schools, drugs, liquor stores, but we got some churches. And so I think that we have gotten so spiritually sedated to the point that we have not awakened the spiritual giant that's on the inside of us. The Bible says that we are the light of the world, the salt of the earth. Let me tell y'all something. When I saw y'all out there yesterday, you all were being light and salt. Y'all were being light. See, this, be, let me be honest with y'all. The stuff in here don't impress me. I've been saved for over 20 years. I've seen people dance and shout, prophesy. What impresses me is when you take this on the road. When you take this to your house, to your community, I say, whoa, I'm impressed. See, these, this hour in this building does not impress me. Amen. It's what we do outside the building. So we are the light. We are the salt of the world. Look at Acts 1 and 8. Talking about the church. Acts 1 and 8. You have to say amen. amen. It says, but you will, I'm sorry, but you will receive power and what? Ability. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you. So the Bible says when we believe, we receive. We believe, we receive. Not, not months later. You ain't got to tarry. The moment you accept Christ, we believe and we have been sealed with the Holy Spirit and promise. And when we get the Holy Spirit, we get two things. We get power and we have ability. So we're not just some weak people. You know, we're supernatural. Y'all missed that. See, in the spirit, we are now supernatural, meaning that we can do things that natural people can't do. And it's not us, but it's the power working in us. And so when people on your job are going through some of the same things you go through, y'all get the pink slip at the same time. But because you have the Holy Spirit, you ain't breaking down. Everybody's crying. I don't know what we're going to do. Uh, Angie, what's wrong with you? You get a pink slip too? Yeah, but I'm going to be all right. Supernatural ability. The ability called faith to look beyond what you have seen, what you have heard, and allow and understand you have a power and ability that goes beyond human capacity. Think about that. Think about that. I told you all last week. I mean, I was really in my, myself just down, just down. And, and, and what got me down was this. Can I be transparent? It wasn't my personal life. It's what I do for other people. And it's like, man, God, can I just live my good life and leave this alone? Why do I have to chase and beg people to work in their own best interest? And God said that is the, 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 for lack of a better word, that is the sickness in our community. You know, I'll give you an example. If we were up north and I said, you know what? You know and I know we need mental health. They would rally. They would sell cookies. They would, why? Because they would advocate to get what they need for their community. And so I'm begging people 
who have crazy, like myself, got crazy kids, and I said, give a dollar, give 50 cent. I said, you know what? I'm done. <laughs> I'm going to use my good blue cross and blue shield and do what I do. But God said, no, no, I didn't call you for that. I didn't call you for that. You have a supernatural ability, and you've been operating at a lower level. See, when you try to do God's will at a lower level, it's going to wear you out. Come on now. You can do the right thing the wrong way. And the wrong way to do the right thing is in your flush. You get burned out. You tired. I don't want to come to church. People, well, you're doing things in your own strength. But when I begin to call on Jesus, I begin to rise above all those feelings. Come on now. In this, guys, you know what, man? Look, don't, don't focus. He said, look here. He said, he said, your personal life is blessed because of that. He made the connection. He said, man, don't just think you've been blessed over here. But no, it's because of what you do over here, I'm blessing you. Come on now. So God said, man, don't, don't, don't lose your focus. Don't lose your focus. So we understand that we need to rely on the power of the Holy Spirit. Look at Matthew 16. Let me speed up. Matthew 16. Matthew 16. I know some of the men want to get to that Bears and Packers, and I do too. Matthew, Matthew 16. You got to use wisdom. If not, they won't come back. Give you a little bit, you come back next time. Don't want to run you away. Matthew 16. Look at what it says in Matthew 16, verses 18 through 19. I'm in the NIV. It says, and I tell you that you are Peter. On this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not overcome it. Now, he wasn't talking about Peter. He was talking about the truth of who Jesus Christ was. He said, upon this truth, I will build my church, and the gates of hell would not prevail against it. And I, there are a lot of different interpretations of what that scripture means, but there's one that I like the most that talks about how as the church, we can kick the gates of hell open and go in and rescue those who need help. Think about this. So, 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 if, so if there are gates of hell in our community as it pertains to violence, and the enemy has prisoners of war behind this gate. The Bible says the church can go beyond those gates and help those that want to be helped. But the problem is we've gotten so comfortable in those nice chairs you're sitting in. And we don't mind doing a commentary about what's going to hell. Well, it's so bad out there. They shooting, they robbing. But the church, no, 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 no. Where, where is it going on at? Where they at? Let me go over there and do what? Be the church. So it says the gates of hell would not overcome a church. It says in verse 19, I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. He says, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loose in heaven. That don't sound like no weak people to me. That sounds like supernatural power. That we can go into the spirit realm and rescue those who are behind hell's walls. We can pray heaven down here on earth. We have to understand who we are as a church. Now, in this scripture, actually, the word church was mentioned for the first time. Prior to this verse, the word church was not mentioned. Now, when this word church was introduced, it did not refer to a religion. It did not refer to a building. The word church in the Greek is pronounced ecclesia, and it means a group or a called out group. Church was never about the individual. Church was never about the personality. Church has always and always will be about the people coming together. See, if we're not coming together, guess what? There could be no church. Now, we could have religious services a good time, but we would not experience the true power of the church unless we are able to come together. Now, once, once again, in any organization, family, or group, there are going to be problems. Why? Because we have imperfect people trying to what? Come together. Different personalities, different likes and dislikes. We're now trying to, to gel together and become one. Now, even though we know divisions are coming, we have to prepare for them. 
and we have to now begin to address them so we don't have to break ranks. So for example, a situation happens. Now instead of you and that person working it out, I'm leaving the church. I'm leaving the marriage. I'm leaving the family. Well, you're breaking ranks. If God puts you in that position just because problems come don't mean you run. You stand the ground and you work through the problems. Look at Galatians 6. Galatians 6. How many scriptures I got? I'm, de I'm definitely speed up, guys. Galatians 6. Galatians 6. And I might continue on Wednesday night. <laughs> I, I got a video today, so I'm good. So, so I'll do it for y'all benefit. Galatians 6, verses 1 through 5. It says, Brothers, if anyone is caught in any sin, look at me, if a person is caught up in any sin, see, we like to pick and choose what sins to point out. It said, If you're caught in any sin, you who are spiritual, that is, you who are responsive to the guidance of the Holy Spirit, are to restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness, not with a sense of superiority or self-righteousness. So when problems show up in the church, even though you are not the one that's wrong, the Bible says you who are spiritual, you need to go to that person in the right spirit, not superior, not self-righteous, but as a brother or a sister. For example, if John has made me mad, all right, and John is 100% wrong in my eyes. I'm filled with the Holy Spirit. It is now my responsibility as the spirit filled person in the moment to go and try to reconcile. In the spirit of meekness, we're going to see why. It says, keeping a watchful eye on yourself so that you are not tempted as well. Why? Because today is John, but tomorrow it might be me. Y'all miss that because y'all say it all the time. Y'all do right all the time. See, the way you treat people when they fall may be the way they treat you when you fall. And not if you fall, but when you fall. The Bible said we all sin and fall short of the glory of God. He said, watch yourself. See, we're so busy watching people that we're not watching ourselves. Verse 2 says, carry one another's burden. And in this way, you will fulfill the requirements of the law of Christ. That is the law of Christian love. It says, if anyone thinks he is something special, when in fact he is not special except in his own eyes, he deceives himself. So when you walk around thinking you're always right, that you know it all, the Bible says you're fooling yourself. We have to humble ourselves in order to deal with situations because guess what? We're not always right. So when you think you know it all, think you're always right, the Bible says you are fooling yourself. Verse 4 says, but each one must carefully scrutinize his own works, examining his actions, attitudes, and behavior. We need to spend more time working on ourselves than we are trying to work on other people. This is helpful in terms of how do we deal with problems. Start with yourself. See, we want to deal with problems by starting with the other person. If you change, if you stop. No, 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 no. What is your contribution? If you focus on yourself and remove your contribution, that just might solve the problem. Because at the end of the day, the only person you can't control is yourself. Only yourself. It says, and then you can have the personal satisfaction and inner joy of doing something commendable without comparing yourself to another. Verse 5, for every person will have to bear with patience his own burdens of faults and shortcomings for which he alone is responsible. You're not responsible for what Leah do, what Freda do. You are responsible for how you respond to what Leah did. Y'all missed that. Oh, she did what she did, and she got to account for that. But how are you going to respond to what she did? Because, see, the way you respond can either close ranks or break ranks. And I told you all before, when you realize you're not in the right spirit, shut your mouth. 
Go sue us. Why? Because if you don't, you're going to do or say something that's going to cause a problem. Look at Matthew 18. Are y'all still with me on today? I'm going to stop here. We're going to pick up on the Wednesday. Matthew 18, verses 15 through 17. This is good stuff, y'all. Why? Because God is taking the church to a promised land. God is doing something in the church, and we have to address these issues. God told me this week that we have to do more by way of prevention versus intervention. There's a difference. See, prevention, look, we're not having no problems now, y'all. But let's talk about it now. Why? Because we know based on where we're going, the warfare is coming. So let's prepare for the warfare. Let's not get over there in the wilderness and all hell break loose. We're like, where'd that come from? That's called intervention. We're going to wait for something to happen. No, let's respond now. Let's get prepared. See, when you know where you're going, you can best prepare. If Rakia knows she's going to Florida, she knows how to pack. Versus going to Denver. Because she knows where she's going. And so because we know where we're going as a church, we have to now begin to talk about these things so they don't rear up in the future. Amen. Because I don't know about y'all, I don't have 40 years to wander in the wilderness. I want to get there in 40 days. <laughs> Amen. It says, Matthew 18, it says, if your brother sins, it says, go and show him his faults. How? Not on social media. See, we are good for putting stuff on social. We think we're talking in code. But the person you talk to, you're talking about them. We say stuff like, um, I hate when people borrow your stuff and don't give it back. People are like, who are you talking to? How does this apply to me? But your friend, they know you're talking about them. He said, if you have a person who's in sin or in a fault, go to them privately. Why? Because I don't know about y'all. I don't like being bust out. I don't want my boss doing it. If, I, if I'm doing something wrong, pull me to the side. Don't have me to be with a whole bunch of people. Oh, you did this. I don't respond well to that. Guess what? Most people don't respond well to that. It says, pull them to the side. It says, it says if he listens and pays attention to you, you have won back your brother. You've been able to what? Close ranks. There was a problem, but because you handled it the right way, guess what? You gained your brother or your sister. It says, but if he does not listen, take along with you one or two others so that every word may be confirmed by the testimony of two or three witnesses. Has anybody ever went to somebody trying to talk to them and all your words got twisted up? I didn't say that. I didn't say that. He says, so when you talk to it on here, go back with some witnesses. Why? So that every word can be established. Sometimes we need a mediator. Sometimes things get so bad that we need somebody with a clear head, with, with, with no stake in the game, to be able to hear both sides and become a mediator. It says in verse 17, it says, if he pays no attention to them and refuses to listen, tell it to the church. Once again, the body, the body, yeah. the body of Christ. Because I tell you all this, unfortunately, there are some people who are not reasonable. I know anybody like that. Don't put your hands up. <laughs> it's not reasonable. I mean, you can explain it, come with people. They still, some people want to be mad. Some people want to have a problem. But if a person is causing discord in the body, the Bible said bring it to the church. Why? Because this is the Bible. You cannot allow anybody a bad apple to spoil a whole bunch. Even in the family. Come on now. It got quiet in here. I'm going to do everything I can to help you, to talk to you, support you. But if you're not ready and now you're causing a cancer, you got you to you gotta, you gotta go away for a while. You can come back when you're ready, but for now, you're causing so much damage, it's best for you and best for us. You know what? That we have some distance between us. Because I don't want to do or say the wrong thing. And you'll be surprised that if... I was the one that was sent away sometimes. <laughs> come on. Well, you're the one sent away. In the relationship, like, I can't deal with you no more. 
It's best for me. And guess what? In that separation, help me. I grew so sometimes we're enabling people in their mess by not checking them on it. Y'all miss that. So it's like, you know, I, I, hey, look, in love, what you're doing ain't right. I tried to talk to you. You know, me and Brother Scott, Brother, Brother Charles, damn, we came and talked to you. You said, right, look, we, we don't do that here. You have to safeguard the fellowship. You got to safeguard the family. You, listen, you got, a, you got a man in the church, and he's going from woman to woman, woman to woman. And, you know, Pastor Scott, you know what, brother, we don't do that here. He said, man, who you think you talking to, blah, blah. Give somebody, brother, look, brother, look, let's sit down, let's talk. You know, this is a church, we're a family. I know you want a wife, but you know you got to do things the right way. Now I'm doing what I want to do. Now we come to the church, look, we're having a church meeting now. Brother so-and-so, we love him. God bless him. But he wants to be a womanizer and run through the church. Brother, can you not do that, please? If he insists on doing that, man, look, you can't come here. You can come back, but you got to go for a little while until you get yourself together. That's all this is saying. But, but what happens is we go straight to the last part. We skip over trying to talk to him. We skip over trying to get him here. First thing is, you go, you go. No, we're breaking ranks prematurely. You only break ranks when necessary. And I'll tell you this, when you break ranks the right way, and you know everything you can, God will send somebody else to fill that gap. Hear what I'm saying? When you're pushing people away prematurely, you now have a vacancy in your rank, an open door for the enemy. But when God moves them, guess what? He'll bring somebody in. There are some people right now who've lost friends for the very same reason, and God brings somebody else in your life. To be supportive and fill that void. Why? Because you did things in order. So we're going to stop here, and we're going to pick up on Wednesday night. That way, that way y'all have to watch Wednesday night. <laughs> First Corinthians, the 12th chapter. We'll pick up on 1 Corinthians 12 on Wednesday night. I hope you guys were blessed on today. Hope you guys were listening on today because guess what? This is the church. Not this building, not these chairs. We, the people, we are the church. We have supernatural powers. We are the change agent that God has left in the earth. But guess what? Individually, we can't do it. I can't do it by myself. You can't do it by yourself. But together, I mean, I, I keep referencing uh, Saturday. I mean, just sitting back watching people just doing what they do. Whether it be security, whether it be people at the door, the gate, everybody's just working together. And guess what? No one person was stressed. Normally, I'm stressed out. But everybody just doing what they do. And collectively, guess what? We made it happen. We're going to see on Wednesday night that sometimes what you do may not get recognized. It doesn't mean it's not valuable. It doesn't mean it's not needed. So I want you guys to please. Now, wait. Before I quit, how many of y'all going to make sure you watch on Wednesday nights? This Wednesday in particular? Because my, my assignment is not complete. Amen. Your assignment is not complete. So Wednesday night we'll pick up on this part. Can y'all please stand in God's presence, please? Hallelujah. God, we bless your name on today. Thank you for your word. Pray, God, your word would have fallen on good ground, that we would not just be hearers but doers of your word. Thank you, God, that we are the church. Somebody say, we are the church. Come on, we are the church. We are the body of Christ. Hallelujah. And we need to really get in our spirit who we are. We are the bride of Christ. And God has gifted us. He has anointed us to make a difference. And I'm just excited that God will save and use people like us. So, God, we thank you for changing our perception of who we are and how we see each other. We will now begin to see each other as allies, God. That we'll realize that they are a, a much needed part of the body of Christ. And we just thank you, Lord God, for what you're going to continue to do as it pertains to this message on Wednesday night. There may be somebody here watching online who's not saved, who don't know Christ is your Lord and Savior. Now is your time. Now is your opportunity. The Bible said, there you hear his voice, hard not your heart. If you would just open up, he will come in. He will talk with you. In the building, anybody please bow your head, close your eyes. If you're here in the building and want to give your life to Christ, please raise your hand, put it down, we'll just pray for you. Okay, I saw some hands go up. Let's pray. Let's pray. Father God, I admit now I'm a sinner, but I believe you sent your son to die for my sins. Come into my heart. Save me. Fill me with your spirit. 
in Jesus' name. Now, if you prayed that prayer in the building or online, guess what? You are now saved. Your sins have been forgiven. You've been filled with the Holy Spirit. You are a son. You are a daughter of the Most High God. Now you need to find you, excuse me, a church home in June. You need to connect with the church, the body of Christ. Not a building, but the people. You got to connect. So if God has brought up joining this church, you can now join us based on your Christian experience, a newfound Christian experience. Is there one? Is there one? If you're online watching, you can join online by texting the number 773-455-0008. Text the word JOIN. Once again, that's 773-455-0008. Text the word JOIN. If you just want prayer, you can text that same number and type in the word PRAYER. Amen. If there is none to say amen, I see now grabbing a purse. That's my cue. <laughs> Amen. Father God, we thank you for our eyes have seen, our ears have heard, our hearts have felt. As we leave this place, God, we will not leave your presence. Go with us, stand by us. He was coming with your blood. Until we meet again, all God's people today, man. Amen. Amen. Husband, tell me love and Jesus loves them too. <laughs>